Cybos is, of course, well-renowned for bringing together thought leaders and key finance industry figures. And to look at the direction of travel and pace of change within the sector, we can speak right now to two of SWIFT's board of directors, Graham Monroe, who is the board's chair, and Samantha Emery, who is deputy chair. Welcome to you both. Welcome, guys. Cybos 2024 in full swing here in Beijing. A lot of energy, but this question really for the both of you. It, you know, when we think about Cybos, it's always really a great time to take the pulse of the industry and to really get a view of the big trends and the topics that really shape the future of cross-border transactions. So with the conference really, you know, in full swing, Graham, I want to start with you. What are the big industry themes in your view that's on your radar this week? So, so first of all, thank you for having us here. And uh, I think we've had a, a fabulous time here in China. So it's been great to, to see Cybos running in full flow here. I, I think as you look at major themes that, that we're tackling this week, it's inevitably about being more digital. And you can see that everywhere you look. And I think we're at the core of what SWIFT does is our aim to be inclusive, um, and our aim to be interoperable. Uh, and those are strategic themes that, that we are driving through and certainly looking at from, from, from the board's perspective. Uh, another area of interest, definitely the, the G20's views on, on how we can improve the cross-border payment flow, make it more inclusive, faster, more transparent, easier to navigate and, and, and so on. So I think they, they also keep us, uh, keep us interested. Um, there's plenty going on. And Sam? So I think for me, the one thing that has been repeated time and time again is just the fact that the pace of change in industry is not letting up. I think the word relentless has probably been used um, a number of times by individuals. And I think it's been really interesting just to see that sort of trickle through the agenda, that all of those topics, be it AI, be it quantum, be it ESG, that we had incubating not that long ago on the inner tribe stage are now main stage topics. So ultimately what you're seeing this week is people coming together to try and make sure that they can capitalize on the opportunities, but they understand the risks and how to mitigate them. And that's why whether you think about it as a sort of cyboss the event, or you think more broadly in terms of Swift the community as a whole, bringing people together to have those really rich conversations, those valuable dialogues, we are stronger together in this. Graham, we're, we're coming here just a few months after the board approved the next phase of SWIFT's strategy to enable instant and frictionless transactions. Operational excellence is the first priority in that strategy, of course. So against this backdrop of rapid innovation and change, how does the board think about the operational excellence and where do you see SWIFT headed going forward? I am, I'm delighted, Johnny, that you worded it that way because this is our first priority. Um, and it sits at the top of, of everything we do. I think operational excellence is the absolute foundation to, to how the, the SWIFT organization runs. Um, and that's the best way that we can service all of our clients and the smooth running of the, of the financial industry. So I, I think it's very close to, to, to how we focus on things. I, I think as we begin to, to look forward from, from there, it's, it's not just about staying with what we've got. It's about building on what we've got. We talk a lot, about it, a lot about innovation, and I think there are innovative new ways that we can think about protecting our environment better. We, we can continue to, to elaborate on the, that smooth running that, that I mentioned earlier. So, But when we look at, at the, the operational excellence topic, I think we have in mind that trust is all important in the financial industry. SWIFT has a big part to play in that. And when we think about trust, I think it's about ensuring the security, the reliability and the resiliency of the platform that we're running on. And that's really our, our top priority. And when you talk about building, it really is about those foundational elements for the future. Sam, I want to ask you about that. When you think about the strategy that also puts a focus on SWIFT's global and neutral role, tell that telling that story around the world is really important. Can you say a few words about that priority, about the global and neutral role that SWIFT wants to play? Absolutely. So I think we were in Toronto a year ago celebrating 50 years of, of fantastic work um, by the SWIFT team. And 
part of that was looking back at why we were set up in the first instance and that concept of that globally inclusive, globally neutral cooperative was to bring everyone together to solve those common problems, those common challenges, um, to identify those opportunities for, for industry. And I think for me, where we get to now, as, as we sit here in 2024, is actually a recognition that maintaining that globally inclusive cooperative is not just a given. Um, and actually, it can prove a challenge in and of itself because we exist in a world that just doesn't stop changing. And so actually, the work that SWIFT is doing, um, not only to make sure that its purpose and its intent are, are really clear um, in every market it, it operates in, um, but to actually consider how it extends its engagement um, through new channels to new audiences in new ways is critically important because that is what helps us make sure that we continue to build that connected and inclusive future and that goes to the heart of the theme of this week. Okay speaking about building uh, rich data is a major building block for the future which brings me of course to ISO 2022 because it's an area and a type of collaboration and commitment as Sam mentioned is key uh, you briefly mentioned it, but let's talk about migration and where are we on that journey? Yeah, ISO 2022 is is a big opportunity for, for the industry. You mentioned rich data. I think this can really position us for the for the next level of of capabilities on, on our network. So it's a it's a vital part of what we're doing. If if we roll back in time a little think about how we got here we we agreed as a community several years ago that this was going to be a, a major priority for us we were going to deliver on uh, moving to those new standards we've had several conversations this week I, I i think if we're honest with ourselves we're probably not quite where we want to be so i think we, we've definitely got more work to do november 2025 is is our delivery date so we're we're targeting with with all of our partners in the industry to 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 move us there there's still quite a lot of work to do so i think there's uh there's a lot of motivation and uh, and so on that that we're uh, encouraging when we think about ensuring the the safe running of the of the network though one of the things that we have agreed to to do is to is to implement a last resort contingency solution so we will do something uh next year as we implement that but what we're trying to, to ensure everybody understands is that will be firstly a temporary solution. It's uh, absolutely not part of our ongoing infrastructure. It, it will be there for a short period of time. And that secondly, we, we, we want to price that solution in, in a way that we're encouraging the, the right behavior from everybody to, to make sure that it's a priority for them to, to make that, that migration. So, so we look at it from, from two perspectives. Um, first of all, when, when we think about our larger clients, what we're doing with all of those larger clients and, and the large clients account for the vast majority of, of traffic on the network. I think something like 180 clients account for something like 85% of the, of the traffic. We're working with all of those large clients, asking them to be very clear on their migration plans and then to hold themselves accountable to, to deliver on those plans. And, and as we said, we, we, we will back this up with a, with a last resort contingency solution for, for those smaller volume clients but hopefully I, th I think we're in the right direction there I, th I think everybody gets the message we're, we're moving towards it we've got to move towards the future and in the context of setting the stage for the future I know that governance has also been a really big focus for the board and I know you've actually taken a proposal from the community for consideration I'd like to get both of your views on this on what the board is proposing and the drivers for this evolution and Graham let's start with you yeah, I, I think the the board owns the strategy of, of how we think about about the the governance, the best governance solution for the critically important SWIFT network. We've been working closely with our overseers as, as we've been looking at at how that process works, and the and the overseers will be implementing some some legal framework that that will back up our governance solution. So as we adapt to that to that new solution, uh, we've been working with the the industry and, and uh, all of the communities to, to ensure that they understand how we move towards it. 
pro- probably the, the major components of it are that if you think about the board's responsibilities today, that they essentially a- a- encompass three elements. The, the first one is to ensure the fiduciary oversight of the SWIFT organization, i.e. it runs safely and soundly and everybody can sleep comfortably that, that SWIFT is, is in good shape. Secondly, that, that we ensure that, that we have a strategy in place, um, and that involves including many elements of the, of the industry as, as, as we build in the, the strategic um, direction for SWIFT. And then thirdly, we, we represent the communities that, that we all live in. What we're doing is taking those three components, taking the first two, and aligning them with a new supervisory board structure, mm. that that will be the the legal element, and that will adapt to to, to our overseers' legal framework. Mm-hmm. That they will own the the first two components. So that's the fiduciary oversight and the the ensuring that there is a strategy in place. The the third element we, we will carve out into a separate new structure that that will be the the Swift Council, um, and that will own the the community representation. We we think with those two components in place, we can strengthen focus on all three of those areas, and particularly for the for the Swift Council element, that we can get uh, great input, great support for uh, both the day to day running and the strategic elements of of what the community needs from Swift. So that's our, our direction. Sam, how do you think that this will strengthen the direction? So I think it's really making sure we maximise what we have in the community, which is a huge diversity of experience, huge diversity of thought, and getting that behind the organisation, making sure it is feeding in in the most effective way possible, that it can be mobilised to support, deliver the strategy that we set. So I think that's the key thing. And again, the reason why that becomes ever more critical at this juncture is because with the pace of change, with the complexity of everything we're dealing with, you need that diversity of voices to guide you uh, to to the best possible solution for the organisation. Graham and I were just talking earlier. We have spent the majority of this week um, doing exactly what we said we wanted to do, which was going out and engaging with the national member group community and the level of passion, uh, the level of aspiration that exists um, and the level of consensus around the direction going forward has been really, really positive to to see. And it would be remiss of me not to mention we do still have the survey live for the national member groups to respond back to. So if any who are watching this are yet to respond, very much encourage the the, the feedback in uh, because it's hugely valuable. Everything is being captured. Everything is being considered. And we continue the dialogue in what we have openly said is an iterative journey towards the future for us. Well, Sam Graham, it's always informative to have you guys on Cybos TV. Thank you so much for giving us your time here in Beijing. We won't keep you. I'm sure you've got much to do over the next couple of days. But thank you, as always. That's Graham Munro, uh, Chair of the Swift Board, and Samantha Emery, who is the Deputy Chair. Thank you again, guys. Thanks thank very you. much.